Hey, welcome to Apprentice Marks. My name is John. In this video, I'm going to try something brand new. As I get older, I find myself going to a lot of garage sales, uh, antique stores, flea markets, uh, spending time on Kijiji. I seem to have gained an affinity for old junk, specifically old electronics and old machinery. And specifically what I like doing with it is I like to pull it apart and see how it works. So I thought I'd make a video series about this. I'm going to call these things $2 teardowns. The rules are that I buy some piece of crap and then I take it apart with the sole purpose of trying to figure out how it works inside. So we're going to learn a little bit about mechanics, a little bit about electronics, and we're going to tear a bunch of shit apart along the way. In this first video, we're tearing apart a... What was it called? An Olympia EC2000. It's a desktop electronic calculator from 1970s? I don't know, I did some Googling and I could not find any information about when this thing was manufactured. Let's get started. This is a fairly bare bones calculator. I mean, it really doesn't do much compared to, you know, your little scientific handheld calculator that you can buy for 20 bucks anywhere these days. All right, that takes, oh, that part just comes off. Oh, there we go. Shit, that was easy. Whole thing popped open. Okay, what do we got here? Oh, 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 oh. All right, let's defeat the paper. Okay. So looking at the inside of the beast, we have got a few major sections. We got your power here. Power comes in the back. It's switched to this little switch here. Transformer to knock the voltage down. It'll still be AC at that point, so there's going to have to be some power rectification on the board. You got your printer situation over here with a ribbon cable that goes down to the main board that sits underneath. That'll be where the logic sits. And then you got your keyboard that sits on top here with the built-in screen. You got a big capacitor, a couple of diodes, and a rectifier of some kind here. That's going to be knocking the AC power off of the transformer down into DC. Then we've got some chips over here that I'm going to assume are maybe memory, but we'll look those up. These guys here are transistor arrays. They are 7 unit Darlington transistor arrays. So. I guess what that means is that there's seven transistors in each of these. And a transistor is just an electronic switch. It just switches things on and off. So it looks like all of the logic for how to calculate pretty much everything, all of the mathematical functionality, the printer, the display, everything is basically on this single chip right here. All right, let's take a closer look at the printer here. It looks like there's probably a single motor in here somewhere. Bunch of gearing. This is like a rubberized roller here to push the paper. Jeez, how do we even begin to take you apart? Oh, here we go. A couple of Phillips screwdrivers. Oh, interestingly, this entire unit here says it's made by the Epson Corporation. So Olympia made the actual calculator itself, but of course they outsourced some of the parts. All of the solid state components here, these are Mitsubishi components, and the printer is made by Epson which of course is a company that still makes printers. You know what I'm not seeing on this printer is how you would go about changing like a print cartridge or a ribbon or something like that. That's interesting. Oh, there it is. That's where the ink goes. Dry as bone. Okay, so basically you buy this little ink roller here. This would be soaked with ink, or I guess you could put your own ink in it. And that just slides in there and clips in. And then what that's doing is rolling up against the back of a bunch of rubber pads that are numerical down there, and it's keeping them constantly covered with ink. Oh, shit. Okay, we, we had a spring of a thing attack here. So this guy... Oh, neat! Okay, this is cool. Alright, this is why I do this shit. So this here, these are all acting as springs. So these were held in tension here, right? They're just a bunch of little fingers, and they spring... I'm going to play that as an instrument. See these rollers in here? These guys are stamps and they have numbers on them. Now, you're looking at them uh, backwards anyway. They're mirror images. So there's your zeros, followed by ones, and then twos, threes, fours, fives, six, sevens, eights, nines, commas, periods, and then... What are these, like, uh, characters? KB010? I don't know what those are. Those must be special characters for something, but... Basically the way this works is that there's a motor that drives this uh, tumbler around, right? And it's driving it around 
until it aligns one of these rows of numbers, all the fives, for example, against where your paper is sitting, right? So your paper is sitting in this roller, so we spin this until the fives are facing the paper. And then what we do is we send an electrical signal that causes one of these little doohickeys here to push, and it pushes against the paper so that the paper strikes against the rollery thing. And remember, the rollery thing is covered in ink because of this guy here. So all of the numbers are covered in ink. We spin the paper until the paper is in front of the number that we want to press, and then we fire off an electrical signal that causes this guy to go and press the paper against the number in the column position that we want the uh, thing that we're printing to appear. And then we've got this little spring doohickey that was balanced against these guys that causes the hammer, once it fires, to pop back off of the paper so you can advance the paper to the next row. So the paper comes in, you bring it to the row that you want, you move this roller to get the number that you want aligned against the paper, and you fire the one that you want for the column you want it to appear in. So if you wanted to uh, print the number one, two, three, for example, you would start by advancing the paper to the row that you want, and then you would advance the numbers so that all of the, ro the row of ones was against the paper, and then you'd fire off the third little hammer here. So you'd go ching and fire that for the one. And then, without moving the paper, you would advance the roller here so that the twos are against the paper, and you'd fire off the second one, ching, and then last year you'd advance it one more time so the threes are against the paper, and you'd fire off the third one. And then you would have a row on your paper that says one, two, three. And then you could advance the paper to the next row. That's really cool. Okay, now I want to see how the fuck this little thing works. You know, there's a little remover for these stupid clips, and I don't have one. Ow, fucker! Ow! Tweezers are sharp! Well, not anymore. Fuck, my finger bent. Oh, fuck, I'm bleeding! God damn it. All right, there we go. That comes off. This axle comes out, and then what happens? This axle. These two hickeys are still in here, right? Eh? Just got Oh, shit! All the pieces are falling out. What have I done? Oh, I think those were on the, yeah, those were on the axle. Oh boy. What happens if we yank on that? Will you come off? I just want to understand how you work. All right, oh, there, one of these little doohickeys comes out. Okay, so that's what one of the little hammers looks like, so. Oh shit. This is the part here that strikes on the paper and it, it, it rotates on this little, so it pivots right here and this part here strikes the paper and there's got to be something that pushes that off. Oh Christ, all the... Yeah, there they go. Well, I made a mess of that. Oh, okay, interesting. So it's a double hammer system. Let me see if I can get... Okay. You see? Here's the hammer here, right? That strikes the paper. And it was pivoting on an axle that I pulled out. But there's these hammers here, these little... Those in the back are the ones that are actually doing the hammering, but they only lift a little bit. What they're doing with the white thing is the white thing's a lever that translates that little bit of movement into a lot of bit of movement and hammers on the paper with the plastic tip. So inside of this sucker, we still gotta figure out how these metal guys move in the first place. Oh, pieces everywhere. Fuck, oh shit. Oh Christ. Okay, well, we're getting closer. Hold that there. Oh, I have another. Pair of pliers here, and we're gonna give her the old, oh, well fuck. I go and get a couple of pair of pliers and I get ready to refund the fucking thing and it just pops apart. <sighs> that looks like it's just a plastic sleeve, I don't understand. Like this little hammer guy just went in one of these slots here. Oh, I see coils. I see coil. oh okay, I bet you I understand what's going on in here. There's some magnetism going on. Oh, magnets are the coolest, okay. I bet you if we open this up, I don't know if you can see right through that hole there, there are coils in there. Coils mean electromagnets. So my guess is that each of these wires, this is the ribbon cable that came off of the control board, that literally, when you put a voltage on there, causes an electromagnet to move. That's my guess. And so probably what's happening is that there's an electromagnet that's firing in there that's causing 
this little metal doohickey to move in some way, either up or down or in or out, something like that. And then that in turn is kicking on one of these little plastic doohickeys here that's levered to punch against the paper. You see it does something like that there. Oh, neat. Okay. Can we get at those electromagnets? That's what I really want to know. Aha! We got it. We got it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely... All right. Oh, shit. Went right through. Fuck. Well, I got my saw. There we go. Aha! Okay. Now we're talking. So, yeah. You see these? You see these coils here? These are going to be electromagnets. All right. Now you show me your secrets. Should probably be wearing safety glasses when I'm doing this. I got little bits of plastic flying fucking everywhere. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So this roller is what would advance the paper. <clears throat> oh, the motor's inside the roller. Well, that's interesting. Oh, this is neat. Okay. So, if you're wondering, remember, these here are the little rubber bits that have the numbers on them that we press the paper against, and these have ink on them, right? This here is how the computer knows what number is currently pressed against the paper. So, what we want to do is treat this like a whole bunch of little switches. So, if we're in this position here, right, then you can read power off of this inner spring, but there's no power off the outer spring. And then you can read power off of this outer spring, but there's no power on the inner spring. And then there's power on the inner spring, but not on the outer spring, and so on and so forth, right? So you can see that as this goes round, you can count in steps to see how far this has gone. It's not where exactly the wheel is, it's how far the wheel has spun, right? You can spin the motor and then count the pulses first on this one, and then on this one, then on this one, then on this one. And when you count those pulses, you can tell exactly how far the wheel has spun in the first place, right? But then there's this rubber roller down here, this guy here, that would spin as the paper is thread th fed through the machine. And as it comes around, you see it actuates this little white guy here. And that pushes on a switch. It's a little momentary switch right there, up into here. And when the switch is completed here by this white thing pushing in, I think we know that the paper has gone up one column. That's my guess, anyway, or one row, excuse me. So the thing that I don't understand, aside from where all this fucking ink keeps coming from, Jesus. The thing that I don't understand is, it's clear to me that as this spins, right, because of these patterns on here, we can reliably detect how far the motor has moved. That part I understand. What I don't understand so well is how we detect when we've gone around a full rotation. And I think that's important, right? Because you could say, oh, okay, well, if I've moved, you know, uh, three pulses, then I've advanced one number, say, right? So. We count pulses, count pulses, we're at six, so we count pulses, and now we're at seven. So we count for our three pulses, and now we're at eight. And then we count for three pulses, and now we're at nine. That part's easy. The thing that doesn't make any sense to me is how this thing knows when it gets around a full rotation, because it has to know when it gets around a full rotation so that it knows, you know, where the offset is, because it has to reset it back to zero when it first, uh, or back to a known position when it first powers on. And that I'm not sure of. I think it probably has to do with this notch here. That's my guess, is that this notch matters somehow. It probably flicks some kind of a switch or something when that notch passes by. I'm not sure though. There we go, and that is the roller wheel right there, you see? Oh, these guys are kind of locked on sprockets. That's interesting. Oh, but you can turn them. Ooh. Probably want to make sure that they're all lined up. You could really fuck with somebody with one of these if you came in and turned their numbers offset somehow and then put the cal calculator back together. It would print all the wrong numbers.
Yeah, there's that little motor running. In terms of hacking on future projects, this little motor is probably the only thing that's come out of here that's going to be any use to me, but... Pretty cool how that entire printer can run off of one motor, a bunch of little electromagnets, and some clever gearing and electronics. The rest of this is largely crap, but well, we figured out how this printer worked. That was pretty cool. Hope you guys liked uh, the teardown, the $2 teardowns. Um, I got a bunch of other crap that I'm going to pull apart and make videos about. So, uh, you know, stick around. Let me know in the comments what you think. And, uh, you know, if you dig it or you hate it or whatever you want to do, if you want to tell me what I missed in here or uh, what year this calculator is from, I'd love to hear about it. Check it out in the comments below. Uh, make sure in the meantime that you follow me on uh, Twitter and on uh, Instagram. I'm at Apprentice Marks in both spots. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, all that jazz. You know how YouTube works. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.